So fairly often you see people online asking what is the best cheap filament and pretty much every time you see at least one person respond with something along the lines of you spent hundreds of dollars on your printer why do you want to buy cheap filament and so in this video I just wanted to kind of address my thoughts and opinions on that. I'm Adrian and this is Reviewed. People when they buy a printer they're spending you know, hundreds of dollars, you know, prices vary wildly depending on what you're getting, but we'll just say for the sake of argument, several hundred dollars on a printer, but they're also looking for the best value that they can get for their money. So, I mean, you're spending two, three, four hundred dollars, whatever, but you're looking to get the most features and the best quality that you can for your money. And I think that when people go online asking what's the best cheap filament, they're looking for the same thing. They're wanting to spend as little money to get as much value as they can and then I don't think there's anything wrong with that so what I wanted to cover in this video is a few different filaments that I think and I, I'm not going to use the word cheap anymore for the rest of the video I'm going to say inexpensive because to me cheap brings along the connotation of low quality and in this video that's what I want to show is that you can buy inexpensive filaments and still get good quality out of them so we have three different filaments that we're going to take a look at the first filament we're going to take a look at is Hobby King's Translucent Red PLA. Uh, it's actually still on the Ender 3 right now. Uh, I paid $16.19 for a one kilogram spool of this. And I actually have about six or seven different Hobby King Translucent PLAs. Um, I, I really like the results from them. It's very easy to print. So some of the examples we have are little Flexi Rex. My kids love these. So this one came out really good. I usually print this one kind of thin walls without too many top and bottom layers because my wife and kids like seeing the infill pattern inside of them. And this guy was printed, I have to check my notes. He was printed at 110 scale, 0.2 layer height, 195 degrees with 10% infill on my CR10 Mini. So, and this is the version with the stronger links on them because the, ten, the kids tend to get kind of rough with them. So these hold together pretty well. The translucent seems to be pretty strong. Don't have too many issues with them breaking. So there's the Flexi Rex, the fun little, little print. Then we have the Pac-Man Ghost, which I really like these two. The, you know, if you're a kid from the 80s, you know who this is. This one I scaled up quite a bit to 255%, 1.6 layer height, 195 degrees, zero infill with four walls printed on the Ender 3. And it came out really good. There's a little bit of inconsistency in the, not in the color so much, but in the finish. Some of it's a little bit more glossy than others, but overall I think it came out really good. And then last for the Hobby King translucent PLA is the rightward facing arrow which is a little optical illusion that no matter which way you turn it the arrow always points to the right in your case this way and this one this one was a fun I had been wanting to print one of these for a little while just just to mess with it if you get the angle just right it always looks like it's pointing to your right so I, I printed this one at 120 scale 0.12 layer height at 195 degrees with 10 percent infill on the CR10 mini and same thing, this one came out really nice. The variations in the layer as far as the glossiness that I saw on this one with the Ender 3 at a similar temperature didn't show up in this one. So I'm not really sure why, but something I can try to, try to mess with. The Hobby King PLA in general has really been my, my go-to inexpensive filament. If you order from Hobby King's website, from hobbyking.com, they run pretty good sales pretty often and usually offer free shipping if you order from the same warehouse. So if you order $50 worth of filament from the U.S. warehouse or $50 from the warehouse in China, you get free shipping. So that helps keep the cost down. Otherwise, the, the shipping gets kind of expensive, but as long as you spend $50 or more, uh, you'll get the free shipping and that keeps the price. Like I said, I paid right about $16 for this, which really is, to me, kind of the top end of my inexpensive price range is $16. I really would prefer to go a little cheaper but I really do like the Hobby King brand. I might have a new inexpensive go-to filament that you'll see in a few minutes. So next we have the Tiance White, I believe I'm saying that right, Tiance 
And this one, I have to say it was $15.99 on Amazon.com. Probably out of these three, this is my least favorite and expensive PLA. It took me quite a while to figure out how to dial in this filament. For some reason, it probably took me half of the spool to dial it in. And once I'm out, I don't know that I'm going to buy any more. There's so many inexpensive white PLAs, but I still wanted to include it because once I did dial it in, it was very easy to get good prints at a very wide temperature range. It was really forgiving of temperature. And the key for me was that I had to print it really slow. And once I did that, you can see this vintage Honda logo. I printed at 0.1 layer height on the CR10 Mini at 190 degrees with zero infill and three walls. And it, it came out really clean. It, it needed just a little bit of cleanup. And for something like this, where I'm gonna end up sanding and painting it, this filament works great. I mean, and it actually, it printed really well. But like I said, you just have to print really slow. If you don't print slow with this filament, it for some reason gets really sensitive to temperature and fan speed. It starts stringing really bad at higher fans, fan speeds. And it really, most temperatures, it starts curling really bad on any kind of overhang. But if you print slow, it, it does good on overhangs and it doesn't really have any stringing at all. I can't explain it, but just because it's so sensitive to speed, like I said, I doubt I'll be buying this one again, but I wanted to include it anyway because if you have a hard time dialing in your temperature, if you just print slow, this one is actually really easy to print with. And then we have the car wash hose guide. I actually designed this one. I'm still trying to work on the name. But basically, you, you wedge it up under your tire, and that way when you're washing your car, the hose slides along this instead of getting caught up under the tire. So um, this will be on Thingiverse by the time I post this video. You can buy these on Amazon.com, places like that. And But to me, they were just too expensive. They were you know, $20, $25, $30 for four of them, when after designing it, I mean, this is probably $0.50, cents, $0.75 cents worth, of, worth of PLA. Uh, I actually did two versions. This one's got the cutout and is a little taller. Didn't actually work very well for my tires, but I might put up both depending on the size tires you have. But I like this. This was a, a, just a quick thing to design. I mean, it was really simple in Fusion 360. I'm still learning how to use Fusion 360. This was a good exercise. But same thing, it came out pretty good. The It's 0.2 layer height at 200 degrees, four walls, 20% infill on my CR10. And it came out good. It's not the smoothest finish but you know for something like this it doesn't need to be you know I'm just gonna be shoving it under my car tire and dragging a hose along it so I mean this doesn't have to be a perfect print so but I think overall I mean I'm happy with it I'm gonna print a couple more so that I stop snagging my hose under my tire when I'm washing the car all right so for the last filament on my inexpensive filament review I feel like I saved the best for last and this one really surprised me. It is actually Ziltex Deep Blue. And it is Ziltex, by the way. I know in my previous video I said ZYL Tech, but I actually contacted their customer service to see how you pronounce it. And they were very nice, very friendly. And it is actually pronounced Ziltech. And I purchased this through Ziltech.com. That's ZYLTech.com. And I actually got this when they had a really good sale going, and I only paid $9 for this kilogram of filament. Uh, I actually ended up buying, I think, eight different colors, eight different filaments, and I've been using them for a little while, and I have to say I'm really happy with the results. It was pretty easy to dial in. Actually printing all of my Ender 3 upgrade parts in it, and at 190 to 195 degrees, you get a really nice kind of flat matte finish. And the layer lines really, really blend together really nice at lower layer heights. This was, I think, at, one, at 0.12 layer height. I'll, I'll probably do a little video on all the different upgrade parts for, my, for the Ender 3, but I really like this color. It's a nice dark deep blue. And the last thing I wanted to show you with this filament is actually this evil minion and guys this is a really really cool model the guy that did it refers to it as an easy print there's no supports and he it is it's a very easy print 
and I mean, guys, this is a, basically a $10 filament, and it came out fantastic. I mean, it looks really good. It's, you know, none of these prints are flawless. You know, but for what I'm doing, minor little imperfections here and there really are not going to affect it. And that's what I'm trying to show with this video, is that there are some really good inexpensive filaments. They give really good results. You know, this thing came out really good. There were there were a few minor blemishes, you know, above and below the, the eyes here, but overall it came out really smooth. This was 185% scale, 0.2 layer height at 195 degrees with 5% infill and three walls. Uh, it was a long print, it took about 13 hours, but I mean, I think it was, it was well worth it. This guy is really cool and it just, I'm, you know, for the price, I'm, I'm kind of blown away. The, it's really smooth. The color is really good. It's pretty consistent. Every now and then you can kind of see a little bit of variation in the blue. It, it lightens up just a little bit. But I mean, really, you know, like I said, for this price, nothing to complain about. I paid nine bucks for this filament. They run sales pretty much all the time. Uh, I think their regular price is like around 12 bucks, something like that, but they run sales all the time. It's really easy to find discount codes online for them. And if you buy, I think $75 or more, they're free shipping and they seem to pretty much always have that going on. So if you get a discount code, I've seen them 10, 15% pretty much all the time and free shipping, you know, you're gonna pay, you know, let's just say 11 bucks for the for a spool of filament. They have a bunch of different colors. They have some really pretty ones. So this really probably, I think, is gonna be my new go-to inexpensive filament. Uh, I still have, I think, you know, varying amounts on the spools, but I still have about seven different colors, I think, that I'll keep using. And I'm, when those run out, I'm definitely gonna buy some more. So, you know, like I said, these all, all three of these filaments really have their strong points and I think that they all, you can get good quality prints, good quality results out of all three. But to me, the Ziltec Deep Blue was definitely the winner though out of these three. I wasn't really intending to do this as a, you know, ranking one, two, three, but as I was printing these and, and thinking about it, it really did kind of stand out. So next time you see someone posting online, asking what the best cheap filament is, you know, keep in mind they're just looking for the best value for their money that they can get. And in my opinion, there are a lot of inexpensive filaments that'll give, you know, good results. So I already shot the video. I'm getting ready to try taking some thumbnails for the, the video. But I realized there was one more point I wanted to make that I forgot to include earlier. And it's that I understand that, you know, there are premium filaments and a lot of them are worth the money. So I'm not saying that they're not worth the money. I don't want anyone to misunderstand that. So that's it. Go out, buy some inexpensive filament, print all kinds of awesome stuff, and don't have to spend a lot of money. Thanks for watching, and happy printing, everybody.